G'day, I'm Steve. Hey, welcome to Woodworking Masterclass, and I'm in the process of making a really big frame. This is the back of it, and um, I was just putting the bow ties in, these things here. What that does, it strengthens the corner, and I did three of them. I thought, might as well stream and do the other one because somebody might want to know how to do it down the track and it could be helpful. Uh, then what I'm going to do, this is a, an internal border for the frame made out of plywood and I'm going to cover that with velvet and then fit that into here. Then I've got to calculate how much of a rebate I need. I've been advised that I might be pushing the friendship if I put three mil glass in. So what have I got here? Oh, I might even, oh, oh that's three mil glass there. There you go. Look at that. Um, yeah, I could be pushing the friendship putting three mil glass in there. So I might have to go to four mil glass. So I've got to work that out. G'day, Louise. How are you? Has your dad got the jam yet? Um, so... Yeah, I don't know. I I'd like three mil because of the weight, but I'll make that judgment call because it's going to be a fairly big area. G'day, Andy. Have you moved? Good to have you there. And if you're looking from your new place, it's even better. So I'll put that glass there for a minute. So what I'm going to do now is fit this last one here. These I've been doing this morning. I've done rondelles on the front, which I will show you them. Susie's birthday today, and this is meant to be her birthday present, so I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to try and get it finished. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, well, I, I was with you, Andy. I wasn't asleep at 3.30 this morning either. It was just one of those sort of nights. What is it? Why is it we can't sleep sometimes? That's what I'd like to know. Uh, took the jam over to over on the weekend. He hasn't tried it. There you go. Good day, Bill. From Sunny Daisy, Tennessee. Well, welcome from Brisbane, Australia, mate. Good to have you in the workshop. And Vincent, how are you? Are you at work? It's good. Oh no, Vincent. I was thinking of Vinny. Sorry, wrong one. Well, whatever you're doing, Vincent, doesn't matter. Good to have you here. Um, okay, so what, I'm sort of under the narring. I think I'll take these clamps off because they've been in there long enough. Um, and as you can tell, the frame is bigger than my bench. And I've got clamps on this end over here which are knocking my screens about. And you'll see the rondelles I've made to go on the front. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with them in a the TikTok. Let me just pick these bits up. I'll need that and I'll need that. In new place, but still cleaning out old, slow due to bleeping stairs. Mate, I'm with you. Oh, you are, Vinny. Vincent, good on you. The nice to know you're at work as well. Oh, dear, oh, dear. All right. So, these things here are the rondelles. I don't know. Oh, yeah, there you go. You can actually see that in that shot there. These are on the corners. Now, what I want to do, or what I will do, the whole frame is going to um, get yakasugi treatment, which is a burn treatment, and then it's going to have faux gold leaf on it. So that's how the whole frame hopefully is going to look. So from that to that. This I had to make a bit thinner as well because it just looked too bulky with that sticking out there. And the other challenge I've got, which I mentioned in the description, is with the thickness of the glass the mat board, the material, the embroidery, the backing board, and the push pins, I think I'm going to be very thin or I'm going to run out um, of space here 
If that's the case, I'm going to make a moulding to go around here and uh, we'll see. But I've got to get this other one done first and then we can move on with the rest. Okay, let me just put... I have been putting things away too whilst I've been working, <laughs> which is different from me, but I've found the shop stays a bit tidier. I did have three chickens in here, but I've just hunted them out. Okay. Let's just see. There we go. So over here, that there will need those other glasses in the TikTok. Okie dokie. So what I'm gonna do, you can see the bow ties here and here. Now there's a couple of reasons I had to put them in. Number one, this frame. It's the first time it's ever happened. Mm -hmm. That's a true story. The frame is so big. Sorry about that if you got dust in your lounge room. Um, the frame's that big. I haven't got clamps big enough. So I had to put it on the floor, clamp it together using the Nobex string clamp. Oh, this thing here, which is excellent, excellent bit of gear, but it does have its shortcomings. And one of the shortcomings is you can't get the pressure on the middle of the joints. So I had a couple of little gaps. That was another reason for the rondelles um, to cover that up. So design opportunity. And because it's so big, I'm putting these bow ties in to add added diagonal or lateral strength to the joint itself. So if I can find out where I'll put that other one. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Oh, so that's what I'm on to now. Oh. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'll actually we'll see if I can go there. Then I can do that, and I should be, am I in the corner? On. There you go. I can't tell. There you go. So I'm making this equidistant from the, the side. So I just go into this corner here, and onto this corner here, and then that should be fairly centred. Back there. Back there. That's close enough. That's good enough. Now I'll go around it with a knife to mark it. I find a knife is much better than a pencil when you're doing this because the pencil, you've got the thickness of the lead and sometimes your brain has a mind of its own and it won't stick to the inside of the pencil line. It will sort of go, oh, there's a pencil line there. That's all right, I can work to that. And you go over into the pencil itself. And by doing that, you're making the hole too big for the rebate. Whereas if you use a knife, you get a nice firm cut and it's thin. Now what I'm going to do, and this is optional, but what I do, and I can't see the screen, so I'll have, I'll have a bit of a quick read while I've got the frame there. What are we up to? Uh, oh, I hope it does. I hope it does, Andy. I hope it looks good. Lawrence, g'day, mate. Thanks for dropping in. You must be ill. I tell you what, actually, I've not got an apology there. Um, the last stream I did, which was well, nearly a week ago, I said I was coming back in the afternoon to do what I'm doing now. But what happened, I had an allergic reaction. Um, I don't know if it was something I ate. I don't know if it was something that I touched. 
I don't know if it's something I used, but both my arms flared up and I was as crook as a dog for about four days. So I apologise because I said I'd get back, but health issues, no, yeah, laid me up in bed for four days. It was just, oh, it was horrible. Still don't know what caused it. Um, I'm sort of careful. I thought it was coffee, so I didn't drink coffee for four days. That wasn't fun, I'll tell you. Then I thought it might have been uh, handling the chook food, so I wore rubber gloves when I was handling the chook food. That didn't do it. I thought it might have been touching the chooks. No, that didn't do it. I thought it might have been working with the timber that I'd um, never had a problem with before. So I didn't work with that. Nope, that didn't do it. So it's one of those things. Okay, what I'm going to do here is in this area, just mark it out with a chisel. So, so you don't get over. If you go that way with the bevel of the chisel outward and you hit down, the chisel will slide forward and also it runs the risk of widening that gap. As it slides forward, it'll blow a, um, some out of here. If you go into the line with just the face, that can work, but you also, because you've got a bevel here, you're going to force the chisel that way and it's going to widen it. So what I like to do is come in and just do little taps all the way around just into that cut line and you could use the carving chisel if you if you like and that just gives you a bit of a reference fence or wall so you don't go over and I router this out and I'll do it in two cuts and what I will do is cut down the sides after the first part of the pass of the router uh, you don't have to you can wait until you cut to depth and do it but the reason I like doing it is because then again I've got a nice wall to um, work to and it's a lot easier to keep clean And again, step here, you don't even have to do this if you don't, well, you don't have to do anything if you don't want it. Um, but I find if I've got a little bit of a, a line all the way around, it helps me with the router not to go too deep. Okay, that looks good enough. So I've got a very small router bit, a small trimmer bit, and I'm going to go just under half the thickness. And the reason for that is I want to have a millimetre or a little bit more than a millimetre above the um, joint so I can plane it off. If I make it dead flush, it can recede and go in, which doesn't look all that brilliant. And if I leave it high, I can flush it off with a plane and sand it. So, ear protection. Lead over shoulder. Turn it on, and away we go.
The other thing which I didn't do, which I will do now, is when you put it on and you cut it, just mark it with whatever you like and make sure that these two line up. That way you don't run the risk of putting it in the wrong way. And what happens, you think it's the right way and you hit it with a hammer, then you get frustrated and you hit it harder with a hammer and you break the joint. So, okay. Now I'm just going to clean that edge up that we've got. And seeing we haven't got any waste behind it, the chisel can actually move away and give us a nice clean cut without encroaching on the area we don't want done. That compressor will stop in a minute. There we go. Okay, let's clean that out. Something doesn't look quite right here, so I'll have a look at that in a minute. Let me have a look see. <laughs> Just trying my own. See there you go, that's why I should have done that earlier. I had, I did, a bit of rubber there somewhere. It's all right, I've got a box full of them here. So I'll get a new one. Well, I marked that the wrong way. That is better. And also it's important here, chisels are sharp for that very reason you get a nice clean cut. There we go. So I'll take that off of there and I'll put it on there. And then I can knock that bit out there. And we should be pretty much back on track. That's pretty good. Okay. So now, I'm going to take it down to about a millimetre of the actual width 
of the thing. So that'll give me a bit standing proud. I'll just cut this then. I'll answer questions in a tick. I'll just. And then I'll have a chat. Okay, here we go. Don't need those on there, do I? Now I guess it would have been pretty boring watching me do the other three of these, so maybe one is enough. And then we'll get on to this other stuff. To make the boat size, I just sort of freehanded what I thought looks good, so I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do it. What I did do, um, when I cut them, I only cut two, but I cut them out of inch material, or 25 mil material, and then ripped that down the middle. So at least they all sort of looked pretty close to being the same. All right. And that should pretty well go in there. It's a nice tight fit, but what I will do is on the um, leading edges that are going in, you can use a knife like this or you can use a chisel, doesn't matter. It might be easier with a chisel. Just make sure you don't cut your fingers. Just put a bit of a bevel either side and that helps lead it in. Be careful when you're doing what I'm doing with your finger in front of the blade because if it slips, especially if it's a sharp chisel like these, it will cut you and then just a little bit on the ends like that so that's what we've got and that should 
go in there quite nicely, I think. Let's take a tab off there. That looks pretty good. Give it a little tap. Yep, no drama. All right, so, those of you that have been following me for a while know that I believe you can never use too much glue. I would prefer to use too much glue and clean up than not enough glue and have a joint fail on me. Coating that nicely. This is um, not original. Use whatever you like, though. Doesn't matter. And then glue it up all the way around. The other thing, by doing this, you uh, the glue acts as a, a bit of a lubricant. So if it is a bit tight, and you've got glue in there, it will help it slip in. Don't forget the ends. There we go. Now put this with the same one you've got here. Pop it like that. <clears throat> the paper on there. Another block of wood. On the top. And there you go. What I'm going to do is put this here. And because I've got a rondelle on the other side, I'm putting this to protect the face of the rondelle. And then I'll put a clamp on that. Now we'll move on to the next phase. Move on to the next part. <clears throat> if you're doing a smaller picture frame, obviously much smaller uh, butterfly joints will suffice. Now, where's my mouse and what's, what's happening? Ah, oh, dear, dear. How far back do I go? Um, da -da 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 uh, do -do -do. You still haven't finished your wagon wheel. Well, slack, slack, slack. Roy, g'day, mate. Good to have you in the shed. David, hello. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it wasn't fun at all, Andy. It's nice to be down here, I tell you. Uh. G'day all! Welcome to the workshop again. Nathaniel, how'd you go with that saw? Have you had a crack at it yet? Um, Lawrence, can you use an X-Acto knife to mark the piece for insert? Yeah, look, any, any sort of um, thin knife is fine. Pocket knife. As a matter of fact, I was doing a job the other day. Um, it was with Western Red Cedar, and a bit had to be cut, and I used my pocket knife to cut. The piece. It was only 15 mil, but yeah, I used a, a pocket knife to cut it, which was a bit bizarre. Right? Oh, let me see what else we're we doing. Um. Oh, I'm not, oh, hang on, what are you talking exactly? Yeah, well, it depends. 
They're different exacto knives, I suppose. There are some that have really got solid blades in them. What was that? So, someone's trying to tell me something. Oh, I did that years ago. A quote from Geoffrey Chaucer. The life's so short, the craft's so long to learn. Oh, there we go. Let me put that back up there. Oh, oh dear. Can you explain why whenever you want something, it's always at the bottom of the box behind all the others? Yeah, it's called life, Andy. <laughs> uh, is it a hanging embroidery picture or are you doing... Oh, no, no, I'll show you the, the embroidery is... Oh, oh, I better clean this off and get rid of the glue before I bring it out or else I'll get extra communicated. Let me just put that back on just in case I need glue at some later stage. Look at that. Are you impressed, Andy? <laughs> oh. There we go. Ooh. Right. Okay. Here's the embroidery that's going in it. I think it took Susie, I forget how many hours she said, it might have been six days or something or other, but I think uh, it's made up of three, four, 20 panels, and each panel, um, I think she said, has close to 80 or 100,000 stitches in it. So there's over a million stitches in that. And that's what she did, and I said for her birthday, I would make a frame. Put it somewhere that's not going to get dirty. So the inside of the frame, I'm going to use this um, velvet, which is uh, slate grey sort of velvet. And I've got to put it inside the border, oh, which I made up out of four bits of plywood. So, I don't know, I'll finish reading the chat first, because I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. Thinking. Okay, what do I do with my mouse? Here's my mouse. Ah. Oh. Hey, everyone in Canada, Brockville, how you going? Big hugs to all. And I hope they get a smile and a laugh from Raven. Hey, Trude. Hey, Nick. Oh. Hey, Louise. I've got a bone to pick with you. Look, look. Where is it? It's meant to be on auto focus now. Why is it not auto focusing? Because it's meant to be on auto focus. That's not auto focusing. Ah, there it is. There you go. That's still from your splendour the other day, that timber we machined. Dear, oh dear. Oh, I tell you, it's mongrel stuff, that. Silky oak, not silky oak. Vic ash or taz oak and spotted gum and possibly blackwood are the worst timbers to get splinters from. Absolute shockers. Ah, oh, dear. What metal would be best for making a marking knife? Um, how thick will it? Well, it doesn't really matter the thickness of the marking knife. The, the main thing is the tip, and I like to have it as fine as possible. Well, any steel would do. I wouldn't use mild steel, but I'd use uh, tool steel, carbon steel, AO, A1, A2, anything like that. 
Uh, possibly carbon steel, no, tool steel, because it's not that hard to sharpen, but it will keep an edge a lot better. So there you go. Hope that helps, Lawrence. G'day, Jared. Hi, David. Yeah, oh, files, rasps are good. Um, if you're going to make a knife out of a rasp or a file, though, you do have to uh, heat treat it. You have to um, heat it up and... Oh, I do blacksmithing and I've gone blank for the word at the moment. But you quench it, bring it right up, quench it, then heat treat it so you... Because files, because of the hardness, are very, very brittle and you want to take that brittleness out. So what you do is you just heat it up, normalising, that's the word, normalising. Um, heat it up and put it in oil and it will gradually uh, cool down in the oil and that'll normalise. Or the other way is you heat treat it um, or bring it up to knob magnetic, quench it and then you can uh, do a scale which you, you put a heat source in it and you watch the colours of the heat come down the steel. Uh, um, it's been a while since I've done it, but there's colours like straw, gold, blue, purple, peacock, and that will denote the hardness. I think most marking tools, a, a straw will be fine on a marking tool, um, or even peacock and then you buff that colour out. And it's good, but yeah, so if you're gonna make a knife, don't just make a knife out of a, or a chisel or a punch or anything like that out of an old file, because it's gonna to be too brittle and it's dangerous. They can uh, shatter on you, but if you normalise them, then go through the heating process, all good. Oh, oh, do 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 do. Uh, so it's all going to take a while before I do need to make a bath fit in to clean off the rust from vinegar. Yeah, look, you can do that. I'll hit it with an orbital sander with a bit of wet and dry and a bit of uh, oil. That'll get rid of most of the stuff. Fam, g'day, mate. How are you? And Craftsman Studio. Hi. Uh, Oh, you know us so well, Andy. You know us so well. Uh, yeah, look, spring steel is good too, but the same thing with spring steel. Once you heat it up and you normalise it, you lose the spring. So, but spring steel would be far better than just a, um, uh, uh, a, a file or a rasp. I do have some lovely, I've got a friend who's a farrier and... Uh, he gave me a heap of rasp and, oh, they're beautiful. Okay, so what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking here is I'm going to put double-sided tape all the way around. Whoop. Oh, that is so nice. Double-sided tape all the way around on the outside. And then I'll turn it over. I might even keep it this side. Cut. Ah, I've got some Taylor's chalk there. Good though. I knew I had some somewhere. I've got some here. Oh. And I'll draw with Taylor's chalk what to cut out of the middle. I'll cut that out. Then I'm not sure how I'm going to do the corners. But let's put some double sided tape on. This is the stuff I use. Um, it's brilliant stuff, I love it. Is it gonna focus again? Come on, play the game. Okay. It's that stuff there. And uh, I just found a place online, if you're in Australia, called um, oh, Tape Online, I think. And it was, $14 a roll, which is brilliant because I've, I've paid up $40 a roll for this stuff. It, uh, it's a sail maker's tape. Very, very strong and very friendly to use. A lot of people um, 
recommend using carpet tape. I find it is a little bit heavy and it doesn't come off nearly as nicely as this stuff does. Uh, so I ordered three rolls. Yeah, I think um, I was, I started paying 20 and I think it went up to $40 a roll. And then as I said, I got onto tape online in Victoria yesterday and I said, oh, what's the postage? And he said, oh, $10 or $11, I think it was. And I thought, well, that's still not too bad. And I said, how many three rolls? He said, oh, it'll be the same. So I ordered three rolls and I was very, very pleased. Whoops, don't like that crack sound when it does that. I don't know how this is going to go, so we'll just have to suck it and see, as they say in the movies. <whistles> oh, that is so nice. I might actually. Oh no, I'll see if I can get it close to the edge. That way I won't be wasting as much. Oh. Okay. Now don't forget if it doesn't go right to the edge, it doesn't matter because I've um, got a rebate going around there. So that's all good. Take, push that down nice and hard. And take this one off. Find a thing here. I don't want to get any lumps or bumps in it. What's happening there? A little bit of glue left on there. So let's take that off. Just reading comments. Um. See you, Lawrence. Catch you next time, mate. Thanks for coming in. Okay, let's push this down so we don't get me lumps or bumps in it. There's a bit there, but I think it's in the paper.
Okay. That's looking quite nice. And do the bottom one now. A lot, a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, tell you the truth. Okay. Bottom one, pull it nice and tight. Okay. Now, I think I want, oops, yeah, and that should do it. Like that. And handy to have sharp chisels. Here we go. I must be concentrating. I'm quiet. Whoop! Okay, now this is the part I'm not sure what I'm going to do, because I, um, I think I'm better off cutting into the corner and then pulling it around. Okay, 
flip it over and just have a look see here how does that look ah that looks good okay so i'm not taking it right up to the corner but pretty pretty close I was so good, what did I do with my knife this time? I thought I hung it up, but I didn't, so I'll use, use the one that's on my belt. that down nice and hard. Oh, how's that looking? Yeah, that's looking good. Do an end one. So I said, don't take it right up to the corner, close, but not right up to it. to get kinks in there if you can get away without getting kinks in it. What's the material for? Well, I'm sorry, you go for a coffee break, you just miss, you miss it. <laughs> what, what I'm doing, Vinny, is um, it's a border to go inside the frame and the uh, embroidery goes inside this. I'll show you a mock-up in a minute. What I might do, might even put some tape over that as well. And I can tell with hand on heart, I've never done this before. So it's a learning experience for everyone. I think what I'll do, I'll put... Um, some uh, cloth tape over this part as well just to give me double insurance there we go pull that in pull this in Oh. 
Whoa! Let me get right up to the edge. There we go. That's good. Put that down nice and hard. Okay, Let's see if I can find oh, that tape if I haven't got anything like that. Just coming out here just to see if I've got any cloth tape. I know I did have. But I'll use a different tape, it's all right. So no Another thing to buy when I go to, to Bunnings. Oh, it's a nuisance. I, normally I've got rolls of this. Not up there, not over there. Not there. There. No, it doesn't matter. I'll use... Use this stuff because it's good too. -dum -dum. Okay, this is gonna like double sure that stays in place. I suppose I should have checked it first, shouldn't I? I'm an optimist. I don't know, I'll, I'll let you guys look at it first, then I'll have a look at it. There you go. Okay, I've got a bit of a bit of a crinkle here. Let's see if we can get that out. That's all right. Alright. Oh, one across here too. Okay. So now the main frame. And this then sits in here. Like that. 
See it so far? And then... The idea is that fits in there. So at the moment, so far so good. But now I've got to work out how much more I've got to go in depth-wise. Um, where's that glass eye? Pretty close, I think. Um, I've got ten mil all the way around on that. Hold that in. All right, so now I'm going to work out how deep it's going to be all together. What? I forgot there was a bit of glass on there. I, I was concentrating. I'm, I'm pleased it wasn't a full bit of glass. Oh, okay. All right. So now I've got that I'm happy with. And I'm going to have um, this is going to be the backing board. Get a bit of glass out before I cut myself. That. Oh, it's, I don't know how we're going to do this. All right. So I've got backing board. I've got the, the um, border. I've got the quilt. I've got the glass. And whatever that is, I'll need another three mil on top. Oh, that's not too bad. See if we can get that one. I don't know if you can read that, but that's nearly 18 mil. Or it could be 17, let's have a look. Yeah, it's 17 mil. So if I... If I allow three mil from the push pins to go in, that's 20 mil. That'll give me five mil on the lip. So we'll just go back to the big frame and see how big five mil is going to be. And then I'll make a decision. That's three mil glass. Okay, so if I did, I might have four mil. Uh, no. Let's have a look. I'm pretty happy with that. A little bit of a bubble there, but I think when it's up against the glass, you won't notice that. So that'll go there. Off this, 
show you the one we just did. That's the one we just did. So I've just taken the clamp off of that. It'll be, it'll be good. It'll be good. So I'm thinking this is 24 mil, 25 mil. Let's have a look. Oh, no, that's not good. I, th I thought I had more than I got. So if I knock that down, it's going to be... Okay, that's 21 mil. Um, all right. What I'm going to have to do now is make a demold or a scotia, I haven't worked out which, to put along here and around here. So it'll come off these corners here, but fatten the edge here. So, huh, that's it. Let me see, let me see, let me see what I've got. Number one, let's see if we've got any. Oh, yeah, that's all right. Um, whether to put a D mold on it or a, a Scotia. Let me see what I've got. No, it's not big enough. I'll be back there in a tick. I'm just looking at my router bits. Seeing what I've got that I can use. I actually think a Scotia would look nice. That's the shape here. It's a cove, done with that one. Or the other one would be a, a D mold, but I don't think that's going to look as nice as a Scotia. So, Scotia is going to be. Let's see what size I need. Mm. Ninety five by eighty three. Right. Let me just see if I find some more Japanese cedar and we'll do it. Let me tick. Pity. Come on, let you go. Go on, move, 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 move. Come on, down. Whoops. Still looking. Oh, hang on, what's that? What's that? What's that? No, it's cigar box cedar, cigar box cedar, western red. Western red, Western red. Oh, what's that? It, oh, no. Birch. Let's check in the shed here. Ah. 
Heaps of stuff, but not the right stuff. Oh, that's all right. The other way. I, I've got just about every timber you can think of, except the one that, come on, no, you go outside. Come on, let's go, go on, go. You gonna come in or what? All right, you can come in. Mm. Coach wood. Bending. Got got stuff, but it's not black wood. No. Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. Could we be lucky? We might be lucky. Hello, Chuck. Come on, out of the way. Fingers crossed. Ooh, I tell you what, we'll just make that. So that's good. Oh, here's Snoop. She, she snuck in. She snuck in when I went out. Didn't you? You're going to go off. All right. No, nah, camera shy. All right, so what I'm going to do is machine this up and make a scotia to go around here. So you can watch me, or I'll do it off lot. I'll do it. No, I'll do it anyway, and just see. This, I mean, this is good stuff because it makes you think outside the box. So, all right, I'll just go back and uh, I'll just machine this. Unfortunately, I haven't got a camera in there, but I shall be back. So play I Spy, you'll hear the machines. Come on, here's a girl, there you go. Need both bits, or I'll be back. I'll take this bit as well. Come on, let's go. The joint, huh? Now we're going over to the thickness, huh?
Okay. If, if anyone's still there, I'm back. Um, yeah, a lot of people, they, they, when they get into woodwork, they want to get a thicknesser. If you don't have a joinder, honestly, you're wasting your time with a the thicknesser. There are ways you can, uh, you know, uh, bodge it up. But basically, all the thickness it will do is mimic whatever you're putting in. So if you've got a bow and a piece of timber, you put it in a thickness. I don't care if you take half an inch off. It's going to come out with the same bow. So the first job you've got to do is put it over a jointer. I personally prefer if it's bowed that way or cut that way, that's the side I put down. And then when it's straight, then I'll put it through the thicknesser. Um, so, I don't know, I don't know at the moment. Let me rip some of that up. And it doesn't have to be perfection because of the fact uh, it's gonna be burnt. So I'm just, in my mind I'm seeing um, a Scotia cut and then bringing it down, putting a curve in it to come down to meet the rondelles. So I might just whack a over on it to start with. I can turn that camera around so you can watch me do that. Um, and then we'll see what happens. I mean, you, you can to the stage where everything's organised and you know exactly what you're doing. But, oh, that's boring. I like these situations that present themselves. It makes you think. Okay, what I'm going to do now, there's a copy bit in there, so I'm going to take that out and put the Scotia bit in. Make sure your router bits are tight. starting to rain. No. I dropped a heap of batteries. Go through a lot of batteries doing these streams. Okay. So now, we've got a knot there, so that's fine. I'll use that so we get, use that knot to get rid of it. I think some not. Where is it? Oh yeah. All right. Um, I don't like doing one pass on something like this. I'd like two passes. So I've moved the bearing back. So I won't be taking a full cut to start with. Um, all right, let's see what happens.
the heart of it. I'll move it back now so the bearing will run on that and we'll get a full cut. That's the full cut. Now, let's just if I bring that right down to there. Okay, now I'm going to rip it. I'm working this out as I go. Oh. I rip it at about there, I reckon. Get over to the saw. Didn't I change the camera over last time? How slack. I'm sorry, I swung it around, but obviously I didn't change it. Okay. Okay. That will be okay. And I might just run it through the thickness there and take oh, a bit off the top. And then I will be back.
All right. I've brought it down so it's just above the height of these rondelles. Wait a minute, and if I cut that one there, let me run another one and we can play and see how it's working out. Remember to turn the camera on this time. So I'm taking a half cut to start with. full cut. I think I'll do yep little bit I'll um where are we can you see that no you can't wait a minute I'll move this so you can see what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut a mitre here and the mitre on this one. So these scotias line and then what I'm going to do with the carving chisel I'll have to glue that on and then with the carving chisel I'm going to feather this out so it just becomes below the level of the rondelle 
and that'll give it a nice molding. Plus what I've done, I've given myself a few extra mill in front of the glass and everything. So that will do the business, I think. We go from there to there. Let me just, I'll just um, go over the guillotine, which I wasn't planning on using. Hence, it's all covered in stuff. Here we go, this is a guillotine over here. It never fails. Andy asked before how come the thing you want is in the last box right at the back of the queue. Ah, same thing. No matter where you put something, you can guarantee you want to be using it next. It, it's just, it's a gimme. Straight edge here. Well, that's exactly what I want there. And I want to take just the smallest bit. And of course, the sides, that means we've got to move all this stuff. A couple of GoPros I forgot I had. Okay. So these two come down and meet there. And then what I will do here, I'll start back here and grace down. I'll use the carving chisel for that on both sides. And then that will give me the extra thickness I need in the frame and also lend a little bit more of a, a design feature to it. I'm not going to do that live because I've actually got to think about what I'm doing, but it should work out okay. In fact, we move that over there. There you go. And that comes to there. I'll plane that off. Yep. So next time I'm on, you'll see what I've done. Oh, I've actually got to go and take this in and get the glass for it too. So 
I might do that, but let me have a look, see. We've been, we've been, I've been talking for too long. Um, ba -ba -ba -da -ba -dum. Oh, dear. Ba -da -dum -ba -dum -ba -da -dum. Where are we up to? Oh, okay, where are we up to? I uh, just got back, What's what material is it? Velvet. Uh, the Godfather, a master, is a jack of all trades because a master in one trade is a specialist. That's why I come in on the local handyman. There you go. Good on you, Godfather. Yeah, that's rain. That's what it was. Brenda, good day. Oh, I'm just about to finish off. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, it was a bit of fun and that had to be done. And that made up for the one that I was meant to do when I got that horrible allergic reaction. I don't know if you can see it there, but oh, it's, it's as itchy as. Anyway, nothing much I can do about it. I'll just put up with it. I will... Um, Go and order the glass for this, and then I'll come back and finish that. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. We might, might even do that tomorrow. And um, in that situation, we're up to speed. I can do the yakasugi, and I'll take it outside and spray it, and we'll go from there. But thank you for your company. I really appreciate it. If you're new to subscribers, um, please hit the subscribe button if you like it. And the notification button so you know when I'm on. It's a bit sporadic at the moment because I really don't know what I'm doing most of the time. But anyway, that's it. Time for Steve to pull the shed door down saying thanks very much for your company. I'm looking forward to having your company in the workshop at the workbench again very, very soon. Till then, be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Look after yourself as well. Get something that's going to stimulate your mind and give you something to do and look after your mental well-being and I look forward very much to having your company. Till we meet again, this is Steve saying remember to keep it sharp and more importantly, keep it safe. God bless. Catch you later on. Bye for now.